Crisis is going good. Uh, you know, I, I, I really like our team. Uh, I, I think we've, you know, uh, from an experience standpoint, when you got to, although we only have two seniors, but I can say this because we played so many of these guys last year, um, we're, we're, we're more farther along at this time this year than we were last year. And part of it is because of the experience that our guys went through last season in terms of playing, uh, throwing them out there and competing. And, and I thought that the, the team last year obviously went through some adversity you know, throughout the year, but how they handled it and, and the way we finished obviously gives us a lot of uh, encouragement going into this season. And it, sh it, it has showed with, with our practice in terms of them uh, being able to pick up things and understand things. Uh, so we're pretty excited about our club uh, and where we're at right now. Questions for Coach? Frankie you added a lot of length on the perimeter. How, how is that going to help you <coughs> match up with teams, especially as you get into conference play? Yeah, I, I think, you know, when you look at uh, our, our size last year compared to where we are this year, we're, we're obviously longer, but we're also bigger. I think we're getting stronger. Um, you know, Simon Folicum, I, I think we'll, we will see him being a, a, a good addition in terms of, you know, last season when we lost Will, we didn't really have another replacement as a center. Uh, you know, we kind of played Junior E2 at the, at, at the five spot. But Simon and Peter both, you know, with their size will, will give us that. Uh, but on the perimeter, I think when you look at uh, a guy like Zeke and Chris Barnes, both those guys, Zeke's 6'7", he's a guard, combo guard, and Chris is 6'4". Uh, we've got some uh, added length that will allow us to do some things differently defensively, uh, <coughs> which I think is good. I think we can, you know, we, we started pressuring a little bit there late in the year and how we did some things with our zone and our zone press. But I think we can do even more with those guys and do some different things. And I think we'll be better defensively with our man-to-man -man too because of that. Uh, so we will give us more things we can do and be more effective on that end of the court. Coach, five uh, transfers. How do you think they'll fit in and how soon do we see some of those on the court? I think right away, I, I, I see you know, obviously I mentioned Simon and Chris and, and Zeke. Uh, definitely be rotational guys, but Jariah Horn, who uh, obviously set out last year, transferred from Nebraska. I think he's a frontline guy too. So th all those guys will be rotational players, I believe. Uh, particularly early on, you know, we got a close scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, then we come back here and we'll have the exhibition game the following week. So it's right on us, but I, I see all those guys, particularly right now, I feel like they will be a part of the rotation. Uh, um, you know, Jariah is very similar to Junior in the sense that when Junior started playing, uh, they're, they're guys that are combo type players that they got good size at 6'7", but they can shoot the ball and they can play like perimeter players. And it's always, you know, I know everybody talks about this positionless basketball, but it's kind of the way the game is played when you have, you know, you put more guys out there that can pass, dribble, catch, and shoot. and. Uh, it's kind of how we play, so it fits into our system and what we would like to do. When you have so many new guys who are going to be playing a lot of minutes, how much of an asset is a guy like Sterling who yeah. seems to be just kind of that steadying presence? You know, a, a, a senior a, a point guard is like a senior quarterback, right? <laughs> you know, when you got one of those guys, it, it makes things a lot easier. And, uh, it, you know, as, as when we had Shaq when he was a senior, I mean, it's just uh, having a veteran guy lead your team in that position is, is so vital uh, in college basketball. I, I think we all would say, coaches would like, when you get a senior point guard, it's great. And we got a senior point guard. He's been through it, and he's played a lot of minutes. Uh, you know, even on that freshman, his freshman year, he's the only guy that played with that team. And then going through that adjustment to a sophomore year, having the ball in your hand as a sophomore to get to the point where he's at right now. Uh, he, he's been a part of a lot of games, a lot of good wins and some tough losses. And uh, I think because of that, he can help, you know, our coaching staff. You know, he can be a part of the coaching staff in terms of uh, <coughs> giving good information to our players. You talk about the newcomers, uh, being a, a, a big time resource for those guys. Um, or what's to come, because they have no idea. Those guys don't really know what to expect as we start to play. And they think they're playing really, really hard right now. And, uh, but you know, you really, you don't, they don't know until we get into it. I think having a guy like Sterling really helps in that regard.
you guys are picked ninth in the preseason American poll. Since you've been here, you kind of consistently overperformed those preseason yeah. conference predictions. But is it still being ninth? Is that some sort of motivation to you guys? You know, it's happened so much, I don't think we, we care about that, you know, worry about that. I think our guys, you know, worry about what we can control and we can't control those. And, and, and preseason predictions, they are what they are, right? I mean, I don't I don't pay a lot of attention. I've been in it long enough to know that that's, that's – my good friend Rick Barnes was picked 10th in the SEC last year and they won the SEC. Yeah. So uh, I feel like our team knows what we're capable of and, and – they may say it, it kind of motivates them. I, I, I know Quan and, and uh, Tap, who went to media day up there, and, and, uh, and it, but it's, it's nothing new for us. So uh, I feel comfortable in saying this. I think our team is capable of being in the in top half of this league. I do. I feel confident in saying that. Now, we've got we've to we've got to do it on the court. So we, we'll, we'll have to perform. What's it going to take in this conference this season to, to get to the NCAA tournament? You know, I think our league's very good. I don't, I don't know. What, you know, I know we don't have anybody in the top twenty-five. Like I said, preseason polls, all that stuff doesn't matter. You haven't seen anybody play. But, I, but from my experience of seeing what we, this league, the, the coaches in this league, and and the players we have coming back, you know, I, I feel confident we'll have multiple teams make the NCAA tournament. So what does that mean? Well, you have to have a good non-league schedule, which I think we put on on paper. You know, we we go out. Uh, Nevada's preseason ranked seventh in the country. We play them early and. First couple of weeks of the season uh, in Vegas, uh, we play uh, two Big 12 teams in K State and Oklahoma State in our building. Uh, you know, we play a Utah a Pac 12 team on the road. So we we're gonna have great opportunities to build the kind of resume you want to build. You have postseason opportunities. So I feel good about what we've done uh, thus far to get ourselves in a position to have an opportunity. So now we just gotta you know perform on the court. And what is that the numbers in terms of how many wins? I don't know, but I think we got opportunity. To compete, Coach. I think this is by design, but you know you've established really good athletic depth, mm -hmm. uh, bringing waves of people. You know, yeah. perhaps if it's all if everybody's healthy, 10, mm -hmm. 12, 13, ever how many players that mm -hmm. is. Uh, do you like that? And at the flip side of that, does that make it harder on the old ball coach to push the right button? It, it, you know, that's a, that's a great question, Bruce. Because you know, practice is very competitive. And, and, and I think when you're trying to build a program, and now look at, we talk about the point guard position, you know, we, you know, I don't ever want to be without one. So we got a senior, but we also got a sophomore pretty good point guard too, and Elijah Joyner. We just signed another kid that's coming too. So I, I think we have some depth, which will allow us to um, sustain things that could happen throughout the year, you know, but it also, makes things very difficult to make decisions or rotations. Uh, we did this We did this exercise the other day with our coaching staff. I said, guys, all right, put your starting five on the board and put your rotational guys up there. And that's six of us with six different rotations, six different starters. <laughs> so that tells you a little bit how close it is. I mean, it's, it's very, very competitive. Um, a guy like Darren Jackson, who was our 12th man last year, 11th man, he's, he's had an unbelievable ball. So. You know, because he brings some quickness and some speed and some athleticism. He can play make on defense. He's our best perimeter defender. You know, so where does he fit in all this? So it it is a, it's going to be a very very um, uh, it's fun, but it's also you know you know guys and you've got to be a part of teams. You know, you got to continue to talk to your guys about uh, roles and and how they fit into roles and hopefully they embrace those roles. Uh, because it, roles can change throughout the year, but you know, as we get ready to make some decisions here coming up starting Saturday, you know, in terms of rotations and see how it goes. But uh, but it definitely is exciting, and I like what we've done with building our building our team. Speaking of roles, DeQuan's a guy had a couple different roles last year. What do you expect? What do you want to see out of him this year? I want to see DeQuan take the next step. <clears throat> as a player, because I think he's shown flashes of being very dynamic, very talented, very gifted, uh, very explosive. Uh, we want him to be consistent with that. I think he's he can be one of the better players in our league. I, I, I believe that. Um, uh, it's just a matter of him believing that and going out there and doing it. You know, if you guys know Daquan, he's a quiet young man. And, and uh, he's. I said this yesterday to our staff at practice. And, it, it's very noticeable that Quan is talking more on the court, and that's uh, that's been a blessing. And because now he's starting to figure it out, 
but he, he can be as busy as he wants to be. He's a, a super talented kid. Uh, he's always been a very good athlete, but now he's, he's, a, he's a really good basketball player. I think he's a de you know, ball handling, passing, shooting the basketball. I think he's been becoming more and more well-rounded. Coach, who makes up for Hatcher who's uh, 15 points and almost eight rebounds a game? To my junior team? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think we, we don't, I don't know if we can point to one guy, uh, Chris, that can do that. I think we're looking at a, a couple guys. I think, you know, right now we got to see what happens with Jariah. Right now we got to see what happens with Daquan taking that next step. And, you know, does, does that mean one of our newcomers like a Zeke Moore uh, is become a prominent scorer? Because you're basically talking about scoring, right? And, and, and uh, you know, I think the one thing I'm really, really concerned with, because I think we can score collectively, uh, is what Junior brought from the defense game. Now, Junior was kind of like, you know, he would make plays defensively that you wouldn't think he can make in terms of he was always in the right place and he'd draw those charges on people, he rotated, uh, and, he, and the rebounding part. So that's, as a coaching, coaching staff, we're concerned with. Where are we going to get that? But the scoring, I think we're going to be able to score. I think our team has a number of guys put the ball in the hole. You had a lot of changes in the staff with guys moving on to head coaching positions. Yeah. Talk about your, your newest assistant from Ken McDonald. Kenny, Kenny, was, uh, Kenny replaced me when I was at Texas. He actually played for Rick Barnes at Providence. Um, and he replaced me when I left Texas and I got the head job in Miami. He actually bought my house. So I guess I kind of owe him a favor back. But, uh, you know, usually if you guys know in coaching profession, when you when you move on, that's the one thing that stresses you more than anything is selling your house. And so he came in and bought my house. And I remember after uh, he bought it, he called me a, a couple weeks later. He said, "Man, I didn't go check out the bathroom. That shower is so small. I can't fit in your shower. He's about six five. You know? Obviously, I'm not six five. So, uh, but yeah, he helped me out big time. So I thought I owed him a favor back. <laughs> but uh, we're friends. We, we go way ba ways back, and obviously if we're from the, the same tree. And Rick, um, you know, he's he's had a good coaching career. He's uh, he's been a former head coach, and obviously his, his experience with the San Antonio Spurs with uh, Coach Pop and, and 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 being a part of that. And he also has had experience with Jeff Van Gundy with USA Basketball. I think all that brings great knowledge uh, to our staff and and what he brings to the table, and and having some feel of what. I'm about in terms of because I think I'm a lot with what Rick does and, and that, that helps too that in terms of from an adjustment standpoint when you bring a new staff member on board. Do you feel any kind of vibe with the team, especially after missing out of the tournament a couple seasons, kind of chomping at the bit to, to get back going? I do, I do. I think this team feels like we're, we're capable and we're close and we're excited and you know, I think, you know, we have the personnel that, that you know, I keep <coughs> going back to only two seniors, but I, I, I still look at this as like a veteran team because, you know, a guy like Kern Scott and Lawson and all those guys played a lot of minutes last year, you know. Uh, Margie Bond has played since he was a freshman, you know. Uh, they play a lot of minutes and have, has had a lot of good experience. So, uh, but there's no question that they, you sense that. We have a really good locker room, you know. Um, there's, there's good chemistry within our team. Hopefully we have that content, chemistry will continue when we start giving that playing time minutes. But we do, we have really good chemistry. And I think these guys, they're, they're, they can taste it, they can feel it. Uh, you know, I say this, because uh, I say this to my staff, I want, I want to know, because we have all those things, those intangible things, how does that translate to, to winning? And, and I'm hoping it does, because I think it's all part of winning and we got all those things in place. Frank, you've been in this game a long time. What, what's your overview of this cloud that is currently over college basketball? FBI and Nike and Adidas and agents yeah. and all the stuff going on now and pointing to Kansas and teams like this are up high in the polls. You know, I, I don't really, I haven't really followed a lot of it that much. Um, and, and to be quite honest with you, I, you know, I, I think our game is, 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 you know, took a little bit of a hit, but I, right now I, I, I focus on what we're able to do here in Delta. And that's, that's how we do things. And that's kind of been my focus. And, and, uh, and, and I, but I, I, I know I enjoy this game we're, we're we're part of, and I think our game is a uh, is a fun time of the year, and I think this is, is a great sport. So, uh, what's going on right now? I haven't paid, like I said, paid a lot of attention to it because uh, it doesn't really involve us. Coach Martin Zabanu, mm -hmm. I mean, his end of this freshman year, he really showed. I mean, he really came on, and then last year had a 
What do you need from him this year to see from him? I need I need Marge to be consistent. Uh, I, I think you know he had 27 points at Houston, and then maybe the next game he may have six points. You know, so we need consistency out, out of Marge, and I think when Marge is on, and this is a bold statement, but I think Marge is one of the best big kids in this league when he's when he's on when he's right, because I think he's such a force to deal with when he gets two feet in the paint. I think he's. He's strong, and you don't see that in college, the college game where guys can score their back to the basket a lot. But he has ability to do that. He has, he's developed a nice jump hook, jump hook, but he's got all he needs is an ankle, and because of his strength and his broad shoulders, he can finish. What we need him to do is take advantage of those angles. Sometimes he gives up his space, and 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 people take that away, and he doesn't know how to, he doesn't finish through that. But but we need Mars to be consistent. And I think at the beginning of the year last year. Uh, DT when he started out, he had a he came up he was coming off a uh, knee injury, so he wasn't a hundred percent early in the year. He had the MCL injury uh, after surgery, and he struggled early in the season. When we got to close to league play, we started to see him play. Uh, uh, and Mars is, is a I think most coaches in this league will tell tell you he's a load when he's on, and we're going he's going to get the ball a lot because I think he opens up things for our perimeter guys. And he's got to be a focal point of our offense and what we do offensively night in and night out.